So the pregnant alone steel, I think, is very badly named. It's not one of ours. So we just, you know, <laughs> but I think it's very badly named. Need rebranding. <laughs> Need a rebrand. So basically, the way that we make testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, we make them in the ovaries. We also make them in the adrenal glands. And it is my belief that the production of our sex hormones in the adrenal glands has been vastly overlooked by the medical model. So they focus very much on the ovaries, but the fact that we're making this amount of, this sort of level of hormone throughout our whole lives in our adrenal glands, there, that, that to me, it, it's not just, we can't just keep focusing on the ovaries. So in the adrenal glands, we make, uh, we, there's adrenaline and noradrenaline, there's aldosterone, which I've talked about in other talks, but we use fat. So let's think about diet. Cholesterol is, uh, comes from fat. Uh, and you think about how many women have been on low fat diets. Uh, you know, we, we're actually taking away the source of our body's ability to make our sex hormones. We then turn that into a hormone called pregnenolone and pregnenolone is a precursor hormone. Pregnenolone will go on to make progesterone and it will go on to make a hormone called DHEA, which then also goes on to make testosterone and estrogen. So that's kind of how it should be. However, if the body is under stress from a stressor, the body will turn that progesterone into cortisol because it, it is less important to hold onto a baby and be in a parasympathetic nervous system response. If we go back to that, progesterone is our core, is our calming hormone. It's progesterone that will tip us into, you know, tip us out of a sympathetic nervous system dominant response. The progesterone is what's going to help to, you know, is anti-inflammatory. It's all of those things. But if we're in danger, the body doesn't want us in parasympathetic. It wants us in sympathetic dominant. It doesn't want us calming down and going to sleep. It wants us running away. So it will turn the progesterone into cortisol. So this is fundamentally why we believe that we are predominantly in an estrogen dominant situation. Because what we are starting to see play out, let's just remove it from endometriosis for a moment, is we are seeing young women, and I'm talking about 14, 15 year old girls who have hit puberty and had a first bleed, then stop bleeding. And then actually they do blood tests and find there are untraceable amounts of progesterone in their body, not untraceable amounts of estrogen, untraceable amounts of progesterone. So there is something going on with a woman's ability to make progesterone. And this is fundamentally the piece of the jigsaw that I believe is completely overlooked in women's health in the medical model. So progesterone, the bits to remember, anti-inflammatory, calming, puts us into the parasympathetic nervous system response. Estrogen is yes, an yes. exciter hormone. It ramps you up. It, it, yeah, it's like it gives you energy. We need that. We need both, but we need them in balance. We need that progesterone. And what we see bringing it back to endometriosis is an estrogen imbalance and estrogen dominance is going to make endometriosis much worse. And so what we need to be looking at is this pregnenolone steel of a woman who is experiencing endometriosis with an estrogen dominant, a progesterone deficiency, how do we address that? Because if we can get that progesterone up, then we are gonna start calming the immune system and we're gonna start balancing the estrogen overload.